think the, probably the only country which is a full-fledged Ministry of Creative Economy. Uh, my first question to you, Excellency, is uh, how do you look at, you know, this focus, I mean, what is behind this focus on creative economy in Indonesia? And what are your plans to, to, to accelerate, to, to ramp up creative economy in the months to come? Well, namaste. Welcome to wonderful Indonesia. And thank you for participating in the Road to World Conference on Creative Economy uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, I had a chance to visit India mm -hmm. during the G20 presidency. And I uh, really thank you for the book that you wrote on uh, India presidency of the G20. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is uh, absolutely very delightful to mm -hmm. have you here covering the scene on creative economy. Uh, the country has uh, put a huge emphasis on creative economy because it has contributed mm -hmm. to around 8% of its GDP and Indonesia actually have benefited from about 25 million or more than 10% mm -hmm. of its workforce uh, mm -hmm. focusing mm -hmm. on employment around the creative economy side from the culinary to uh, creative design, also to fashions, uh, handicrafts, all the way to music, film, animations, games. And this is a very fast growing industry, almost double mm -hmm. of the country uh, economic growth. Uh, my ministry is in charge of policy mm -hmm. and executing some of the uh, program mm -hmm. uh, for the creative economy. So we provide training, mm -hmm. uh, we help with promoting, but very importantly, we provide access to funding mm -hmm. and financing right. for this close to uh, 60 million creative economy, micro, small, medium enterprises mm -hmm. across the country mm -hmm. in order for them to not only yes. uh, start up, but mm -hmm. also scale up. So it is uh, uh, something that the uh, government under Pak Jokowi and continuing under Pak Prabowo uh, uh, comes October of this year would like to really put a uh, huge emphasis on. Uh, see, Indonesia has a very vibrant creative economy and India also has very vibrant uh, creative and culture industries. Uh, now, uh, how do you look at the prospects of collaboration uh, between India and Indonesia in this important uh, area? There's a huge potential collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's why I was very, very uh, um, glad that uh, India now uh, actually contributed to the second largest international tourist arrival in Bali mm -hmm. uh, out of top mm -hmm. five before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at the Indian uh, creative economy also mm -hmm. similar to Indonesia is capitalizing on intellectual property for human creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cultural heritage. Right. We have a lot of similarity between India and Indonesia. When I was growing up, I, I was reading Mahabharata. Uh, my favorite book is Bhagavad Gita. Uh -huh. I, I also uh, watch the Ramayana epic, um, right, right. Um, uh, the dances uh, near Prambanan. Uh, you need to visit Prambanan yeah, uh, right. Temple, by the way, in right. Yogyakarta. Uh, also science and technology in uh -huh. India, uh, you put a lot of emphasis on science and technology. So I think the talent development from both sides, we could benefit infrastructure improvements. That is also a big right. homework done by India and Indonesia right. and increase access to financing. And I think uh, the low hanging fruits, if we could develop India, Indonesia creative hubs, like a joint uh, creative hubs to uh, practice mm -hmm. and uh, participate mm -hmm. uh, in a sustainable global supply chain mm -hmm. uh, so that we could improve uh, competitiveness uh, in the creative workforce. Secondly, I think um, India and Indonesia uh, would benefit from greater connectivity. Yes. Uh, until recently, we don't have direct connections linking True. Delhi to Jakarta, Delhi to Denpasar, Mumbai to Denpasar. Mm -hmm. But now we have more connectivity because in the past, we only connect through our love of Bollywood. <laughs> yes. uh, and 
Indian weddings uh, uh, that is happening uh -huh. a lot in Bali uh -huh. recently. So I think uh, Bollywood uh, has been very successful here in Indonesia and we think also Indonesian movie could be quite successful in, uh, in India. Uh, because of our cultural similarities and identities mm -hmm. to integrate diverse creative sectors. So film, televisions, mm -hmm. animations, mm -hmm. fashion, music, uh, right. performing arts into really a thriving industry on both mm -hmm. sides of uh, the sub uh, continents of India and also archipelago of Indonesia. So I think uh, if I could really focus key collaborate collaborating uh, areas or arenas would be financial accessibility, bolstering in intellectual property rights, mm -hmm. and advancing human capital. These three areas, we believe it's going to be a huge areas of collaborations and World Conference on Creative Economy would be a key uh, platform for us to uh, collaborate uh, and promote uh, more and innovate more uh, in this area. Uh, you're right, you know, you summed it up very well. Uh, but talking about tourism, uh, I believe it is growing, the two-way tourism, and because of the deep cultural and civilizational affinities. Uh, uh, but connectivity, as you say, uh, is a problem. Yes. What are we doing to address, you know, I mean, from what I know, there is only one direct flight from Mumbai to Jakarta, Delhi to Jakarta, and more places, you know, uh, to Bali and the rest. What, what, what is happening behind the scenes? Are we taking any concrete steps in this direction? We have really been focusing on how we could mm -hmm. uh, establish more connectivity between mm -hmm. cities uh, in India and also major economic centers in Indonesia. Um, the uh, obvious ones would be Delhi, Jakarta mm. and Mumbai and Pasar, which is now we're really mm -hmm. focusing on with direct flights of uh, Indigo and Air, uh, Air India. But also there are um, uh, obvious connectivity that we could mm. uh, really revive, such as uh, we started thinking, why not Chennai to uh, Kuala Namu in Medan, right. linking Lake Toba, which is a mm -hmm. favorite uh, mm -hmm. destinations and super priority mm -hmm. tourism destination here, mm -hmm. to major uh, economic centers of India. So um, we are really opening up uh, mm -hmm. from our side and also connectivity through hubs of uh, Vietnam, Kuala Lumpur, uh, and Singapore mm -hmm. have been uh, proven to be a key success factors. Also linking through mm -hmm. uh, Bangkok within the concept of ASEAN as a single destination. Mm -hmm. So I believe with tourism, there will be opening up of more uh, creative economic collaborations. Right. Indonesia is a pioneer of sorts in green and sustainable tourism. Uh, let me congratulate you on very laudable initiatives you have taken in this area. This is another area where India can learn much from Indonesia. How do you look at the collaboration in terms of uh, uh, promoting sustainable and green tourism between India and Indonesia? We believe that the uh, concept of 5P, people, mm. planet, prosperity, mm -hmm. peace and partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that the green uh, economy is a unstoppable mm -hmm. uh, global trend. Uh, we believe uh, that uh, being green uh, could uh, not, you don't really um, sort of like uh, trade off between mm -hmm. green and profitability. Mm -hmm. Actually, the only way to go to profitability is by being green. Right. So uh, we are shaping from the tourism side through sustainable quality tourism mm -hmm. into uh, a knowledge and technology uh, that comes from the uh, community participations. Mm -hmm. Community-based tourism uh, actually have been big in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, village tourism uh, and rural tourism is something that we have promoted. And sustainable production and consumptions is uh, not only 
what we uh, preach, but uh, that's all mm -hmm. what we uh, have been implementing. Uh, sustainable practices in fashion. So uh, the um, this uh, looks nice. like a kimono <laughs> that I'm wearing is actually uh, made out of uh, sustainable um, uh, fabrics uh, and empowering 30 women using uh, sustainable coloring. Mm -hmm. So uh, secondly is decent work and economic growth. We don't just focus on the growth itself, we would love to have the 8% growth that mm -hmm. in India has been right, able to produce right, right. because that will accelerate uh -huh. our march towards developed economy by 2045. But we need to also make sure that the type of jobs that, that has created through the economic growth mm -hmm. is decent and with quality. Um, and this is how we mm -hmm. think we want to focus uh, going forward. Industry, innovations, and infrastructure. This is SDG number nine. Mm -hmm. um, innovations is a mantra. Mm -hmm. uh, but tourism uh, is actually transforming from the three S of the yester years, mm -hmm. sun, sea, and sand, mm -hmm. to the three S's of the current uh, trend, which is serenity, spirituality, and sustainability. Wow. Um, reduce inequalities, SDG mm -hmm. number 10. Mm -hmm. Tourism and creative economy has empowered inclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the concept that we learned through COVID mm -hmm. that no one will be left behind. Right. Uh, not only gender equality, mm -hmm. but also access to disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, people with disabilities. So, and finally, climate actions. We have products such as the carbon offsetting. When you fly into Bali, immediately you get notified. Do you want to participate mm -hmm. in uh, our carbon offsetting programs, such as planting mangroves mm -hmm. or uh, restoring the coral reefs and many other uh, green tourism activities that we promote and we could use it through our digital means. So concrete actions like this mm -hmm. is something that we uh, have been really advancing uh, but it is not just India mm -hmm. uh, looking at Indonesia. We need to look also to India mm -hmm. because of its ability for mm -hmm. the economic growth, mm -hmm. this uh, production link uh, initiatives and policies mm -hmm. that uh, you have uh, been very successfully put on and also uh, this great uh, digital economies that you have uh, right. been able to accelerate in the, in the last uh, few years. You participated in the culture ministers meeting, G20 culture ministers meeting in Goa last year, and there was a Goa roadmap which adopted, right? What has been the progress in implementing that? Great progress, mm -hmm. uh, because Goa initiatives mm -hmm. followed the Bali initiatives that mm -hmm. we, as um, part of the Troika, introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's focused on two aspects, which is quality and sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I think um, uh, we, uh, participated uh, in Goa with a renewed enthusiasm mm -hmm. that the cultural uh, and tourism mm -hmm. uh, side is mm -hmm. now taking a very uh, important and strategic role in the roadmap mm -hmm. uh, for both uh, India and the rest of the G20. And I think uh, G20 also included uh, creative economy into the mix uh, so we were able to pair World Conference on Creative Economy with G20 Presidency mm -hmm. in 2022. And I think uh, this year we're going to introduce this to Tashkent right. uh, in Uzbekistan. And I think uh, it produced a lot of uh, uh, discussions uh, mm -hmm. within the several of the stakeholders community, maximizing synergies between mm -hmm. tourism and creative mm -hmm. sectors. And I think this is a platform for mm -hmm. creating policy recommendations uh, right, right. Uh, and sharing best practices. And the good thing last year, mm -hmm. for the very first time, creative economy made it to the UN resolutions. That's right. And this is, uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous impact to foster bilateral and multilateral uh, cooperations. We believe mm -hmm. that the India model, uh, whereby uh, in the past uh, few years, the stability that Modi government mm -hmm. uh, have introduced, and I was very, very lucky to be 
invited to the Ricina dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, and there I could see that this vibrant mm -hmm. um, economy is also mm -hmm. driven mm -hmm. by a lot of, of the uh, Gen Z, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, of the millennials uh, putting forward some of the key agendas to be able to be solved. And we have even a follow-up of that Raisina dialogue mm -hmm. into bringing the Raisina dialogue Indonesian versions mm -hmm. that I was uh, able to participate with uh, Ambassador Sandeep. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a great way to move forward. Uh, just a last one, which is that we talked about Tashkent. Uh, what will be the World Conference on Creative Economy? What will be the major, what, what are the major expectations from this conference? in the area of global tensions and geopolitics. I want mm -hmm. the World Conference on Creative Economy would focus on peace and harmony. Right. Because the creative uh, industries, creative economy, really uh, is the one driving mm -hmm. uh, the uh, next phase of our economy. And that cannot be done without peace and harmony. We need to promote uh, global peace and harmony and creative economy would be a, a great uh, mm -hmm. platform to do this because it provides cultural exchange mm -hmm. whereby we could really uh, promote understanding uh, and respect uh, mm -hmm. to social inclusions and conflict resolutions. We cannot agree on Right. Many things, right. but creative economy, we agree on creativity right. and innovations. Right. We also would understand diverse cultures through music, mm -hmm. through literature, mm -hmm. through film, and it could promote uh, empathy and unity. Right. Uh, why do we, uh, I think, uh, focus on issues that mm -hmm. have not, uh, that have uh, divided us in the past? Why not? we focus on issues that unite us. Right. And this is uh, what Indonesia could offer also. We have 17,000 islands, 400 ethnic groups, mm -hmm. 700 languages, mm -hmm. but we have been able to put together this unity and diversity concept mm -hmm. uh, we call Bineka Tunggal Ika, right. which is also uh, from Sanskrit. Uh, and this is uh, how we could push artistic endeavors through theater and visual arts, See, uh, it could serve as peaceful tools Absolutely. Uh, and I think it at the same time generate jobs and stability, reduce uh, poverty and uh, hopefully will uh, reduce also the uh, related conflicts and I think uh, overall it will enrich societies mm -hmm. culturally and economically and contributing to a peaceful world. That's a very good note to end on, creative economy as a force of peace, harmony in these conflict-ridden times. Thank you, uh, Minister, for finding time to do this. I'm extremely Sukriya. grateful to you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.